we have this year's version of Winter Storm Yuri. For some of you, that might be scary, and for some of you, that might be great. So, this is Winter Storm Landon, which will be creating a mess of snow, sleet, freezing rain, heavy rain, thunderstorms, cold air, warm air, just all of the above in the central and eastern U.S., although this is a cross-country snowstorm. So, at a glance, a midweek snowstorm is looking increasingly possible as the calendar turns to February. Snow, sleet, and freezing rain are possible from the plains to the Midwest, Great Lakes, and northern New England. Warmer air could mean primarily rain for the rest of the Northeast, just days after winter storm Keenan. The most important part here is we are in the peak time of year for large expansive winter storms in the United States. So, here's the setup. We have a high pressure, a very strong high pressure in the northern tier of the country that will be bringing in that cold Arctic air from, well, the Arctic and Canada, as well as this low pressure, which we're going to be tracking today, will be drawing up moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, and that collides with that cold air, creating snow, sleet, freezing rain, and just a overall mess, especially in the central part of the country. So, Tuesday night into Wednesday, we kind of see the beginning part of the storm, where we have light snow, light sleet, maybe a little bit of freezing rain, some rain as well in parts of the central U.S. But as we move into Thursday, the stronger side of the storm does take shape, and that's when we get into our heavier snow, heavier sleet, very heavy freezing rain, some thunderstorms, and just heavy soaking rain overall. So in terms of snowfall, this is the Weather Channel's image here, which shows 5 to 8 inches in parts of Texas, but overall 5 plus inches from areas le west of Dallas, but south of Amarillo, to Maine. So, let's start off here with the NAM 12 kilometer model, and we can see here that we have a low pressure in the very southern parts of Canada, and that will be bringing in some cold air behind it as well as setting up this high pressure here, already at 1032 millibars, which is extremely strong for a high pressure right off the bat. Then we see that storm kind of weaken out and mature, but we have a new low pressure here in the south, which will start to bring in some gulf moisture. It will be pulling up that gulf moisture, and we see those two air masses collide, and we start to see some snow in parts of the Rockies, as well as in parts of the Midwest. Now, that's Snow continues to develop here. Some areas could see moderate snow, but mostly light snow. And then that more moderate snow does start to filter in, as well as maybe a little bit of freezing rain in parts of Missouri and Illinois, but mostly snow and rain at this point before the second part of the system star starts to take shape. We haven't really loaded all that in here on the NAM. We have loaded it all in on the European model, which shows a very similar setup. At least all of the models have shown this setup here kind of staying constant. But the second part of this storm, uh, the European model is showing intense rainfall, some moderate heavy ice, but mostly light snow here. This is Wednesday night going into Thursday. But that snow freezing rain does strengthen as this system continues to develop and it's still in its immature phase, therefore things could be a little bit more unstable, uh, so we could get some very heavy snowfall in parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, heavy freezing rain in Oklahoma and Arkansas, as well as some thunderstorms starting to develop in Texas, Arkansas as well. So we continue to progress, and we get a line of thunderstorms from Tennessee all the way down, including areas of western Mississippi, eastern Arkansas, uh, central Louisiana, and southeast Texas. We have heavy freezing rain in Missouri and Arkansas, but mostly light to moderate rain for, not rain, snow. Uh, but we also have light to moderate rain out east as well. Just the northern and eastern parts of this storm are not going to be very strong at the start of this development, but they will become more intense as this storm continues to progress. So you could see areas like Cleveland getting into that moderate to heavy snowfall, as well as areas such as Columbus and Cleveland getting into heavy freezing rain. But as we move into the northeast, we do see the storm get a little bit stronger with some heavy snowfall in parts of northern and western New York, as well as the northern tier of New England, with some freezing rain stretching all the way back into Kentucky at this point with this 
storm finally leaving the coast and could see a little bit of rain, snow, freezing rain mix along the I-95 corridor, which could create a mess with some melting snow as well as some more ice, sleet, snow on top of that melting snow. So let's move on to the GFS, which is very similar to the European model, but not exactly the same. The main difference between the European model and the GFS is that the GFS has the second part of the storm, one bringing air further south with a 1050 millibar high pressure, so we could see moderate to heavy snow in Texas, as well as heavy freezing rain in Texas and Arkansas as well, and then moving up into the Ohio River Valley and the Great Lakes regions with heavy snow, sleet, freezing rain, some thunderstorms as well. So just overall a more intense system as it continues to move on, as well as the GFS is showing a little bit of snow on the back end in the I-95 corridor as well. So basically we're just seeing a more complex system there that does have more components, more strength, more intensity. The Canadian model is kind of right in the middle as it usually is uh, with a Low pressure, that kind of stays in between the two, but a little bit further south, uh, but really not giving that snow to the I-95 corridor, but more uh, sleet and freezing rain to the I-95 corridor instead of that snow. In terms of snow and freezing rain totals, the NAM is showing a general 6 to 12 as part of that first part of the system. Remember, it hasn't loaded in the entirety of the event, so a very decent 6 to 12 out of that first and the beginning of the second part of the storm and in terms of freezing rain it has started to load in that heavier freezing rain amounts maybe even an inch in some spots already and this is just ending at Thursday at 1 a.m. Eastern midnight central. The European model is showing overall a very large swath of a foot of snow from just north of St. Louis through areas such as Indianapolis, Detroit, Cleveland, Buffalo, and into Maine, as well as, well, we can't look at that ice because I don't pay for Pivotal Weather Plus. But the GFS is showing a much stronger storm, as we stated before, with a foot of snow from Oklahoma all the way through Maine and potentially even two feet of snow from St. Louis through into Buffalo. So that is definitely a potential for some very heavy snow there, as well as some very heavy freezing rain totals and widespread icing. But the biggest amounts, those largest amounts, are going to be in this band here from Oklahoma all the way up into New Hampshire, where areas could see one to two inches of ice. Now, if we do see that intense storm that the GFS is predicting, we could definitely see these amounts of ice especially in parts of Missouri and Arkansas where you could see two rounds of ice, one with both, part, uh, both parts of the storm. Now, in terms of just the pure amount of people under some icing, we have most of the population centers in Texas, excluding Houston, maybe San Antonio as well, but definitely Dallas under the gun here. Then we see areas around uh, Columbus, Cincinnati, we also have Albany, Boston, New York, Philadelphia, D.C. So many areas, especially in that I-95 corridor, seeing some icing. The Canadian model showing a still strong system, uh, but more in the northeast with that two plus feet possible in parts of northern New York and the northern tier of New England, where there is a general 12 to 24 from Missouri through Maine, including areas such as St. Louis, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Columbus, and Buffalo. But notably, we have that shift to the south, so Chicago and Detroit are left out of that 12 to 24 inch band, and Chicago could even see less than six inches. In terms of rainfall, or just total accumulated precipitation, which includes Snow, sleet, freezing rain, rain. Just the total amount of precipitation falling from the sky. Uh, most of this is going to pertain to rain. So we could see a general swath of 2 to 4 inches of moisture across parts of the Midwest, 
the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys and the Mississippi River Valley as well, with spots in the south picking up closer to that 3-4 inch mark because of those thunderstorms, as well as just that consistent rainfall that you'll be seeing maybe even over 2-3 days. The last big part of the storm that we do have to talk about is cold, and there will definitely be plenty of cold as this low pressure that we were talking about earlier, that clipper low pressure, moves through bringing in Arctic air. And this is just two meter ab above ground level temperature. So this is just your standard temperature that we'll, you'll see when you first open up, open up your uh, weather app. Now, we could see some very cold temperatures as the storm moves through, like in Texas, where you could be below freezing for your normal highs and even down into the 20s and single digits in some spots as well as the storm continues to move through just a mass area of very cold air as the storm moves through and it's that time of year where we get that very cold air moving further and further south so let's take a look at my predictions for this storm and since this is a coast to coast storm we're going to start off in the pacific northwest where you could see some mountain snow in the cascades and that could result in two foot plus snow totals. Then you also have some mountain snow in areas of Idaho, Montana, as well as the front range of the Rockies as well. Uh, but generally in between those areas of higher elevations, you could see a general zero to three inches of snow. In terms of the main event here, uh, we could see three to six inches stretching all the way back to Arizona and Wyoming and stretching up around areas of uh, the main band but you also have zero to three on that southern end where you could see some switchover from uh, snow to freezing rain or sleet or even rain. So there is a potential there for some switchover. In terms of six to 12 inches of snow, you have most of southern Kansas, Oklahoma, northern Texas, uh, parts of northeast New Mexico and southeast Colorado consistently getting that 6 to 12, and then areas outside of this main band of 12 to 24, which includes areas such as St. Louis, parts of central Illinois, uh, areas near Indianapolis, Detroit, Cleveland, uh, parts of co uh, uh, Erie coast of Pennsylvania, so like Erie, uh, Buffalo, New York, Albany, New York, maybe even uh, areas a little bit further south of, the, of Albany, New York. They're kind of right on the line there. Then you have all of that stretching into Maine. We also have this yellow, not yellow, red. That's red. All right, so red, uh, which is the greatest risk of icing. Uh, and you can see if that stretches pretty far south. Memphis included there, Dallas, D.C., Baltimore, uh, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, all in that greatest area of icing. We also have two areas of greatest uncertainty here, uh, including the I-95 corridor in the northeast and the areas around Lake Michigan in the Midwest. The first area here is because of that back end. This area here in the circle could see some snow on that back end, but that is still uncertain as if that was going to happen, it would happen on Friday, which is very far out. So this second area of greatest uncertainty is based off of track. So if the track moves further south or further east, this area will get less snowfall if it moves further west or further north. This area will see more snowfall. But that is all that I have for this system. It is a massive storm with massive impacts. And this storm could be uh, what we talk about for a little bit, just like we talked about Winter Storm Yuri. So hopefully uh, areas, especially in the south, learned from last year with Winter Storm Yuri on, you know, making sure to prepare for these types of snow events where you could see cold air drifting very far south. Uh, this could be a particularly dangerous situation if people are not prepared, especially as far, as far south as uh, southern Texas. So that's why we have made this video so early, even though nobody's under a winter storm watch yet. But please get prepared as early as possible. And if you need any updates, I will be cr uh, creating more videos, updates about this storm throughout the rest of this week as this storm continues to move through the country. So hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any of those updates.
But that is all I have for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.